at the front. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Joel Benjamin. I'm here representing Catherine Howarth. Um, I'm also a campaigner with Move Your Money. Over the past years, HSBC has forged its own reputation for moving money, being overtly referenced as the money laundering, terrorist financing fictional bank, HLBC, in the hit TV series Homeland. With HSBC's reputation in tatters following a 1.9 billion fine for Mexican money laundering and terrorist financing, instead of focusing on improving the bank's own practices, addressing management failures, it appears HSBC has been shifting its own problems of regulators onto its customers. When Stephen Cotton of Worcestershire, an HSBC customer for 30 years, tried to withdraw £7,000 from a local branch, he was asked to provide proof of what he wanted the money, his own money, for. Stephen was not alone, with thousands of customers affected by this change in policy, which HSBC failed to communicate to depositors. Some may consider a policy of absolute transparency for depositors hypocritical from a bank which enables tax avoidance via Swiss bank accounts and allowed the Sinaloa drug cartel to launder billions through its branches in boxes especially designed to fit the exact dimensions of HSBC teller windows. How many questions are asked of these customers? Instead, the same cartel operators were able to buy 13 turboprop aircraft to move drugs across international borders, bought direct via HSBC bank accounts. Rather than clearing house, committing to transparency and sorting out its own affairs, HSBC is passing the buck to its customers, the vast majority of whom are honest and law-abiding, which is more than can be said for the bank. More skeletons are yet to emerge from the HSBC closet, Last November, I was at an event making banks work for us, organised by Jean Lambert, MEP, and attended by yourself, Douglas Flint. During the talk, Nicholas Wilson, a lawyer previously acting for HFC Bank, a subsidiary acquired by HSBC in 2003, interrupted proceedings to deliver a note to HSBC Chairman Douglas Flint. The note from Mr. Wilson, known as Mr. Ethical by his former employers, claims that HFC, HSBC, added illegal charges to customers of high street stores, including John Lewis Partnership, Curry's, Dixon's, PC World and B&Q, whose accounts were placed in default. The law firms in question, Reston's and Waitman's, continued adding the illegal charges for HSBC after Mr. Wilson blew the whistle and was sacked in 2003. Wilson's complaint that the charges were illegal was upheld by the Law Society and the Office of Fair Trading, who finally made an order against HSBC in 2010 to stop adding the illegal charges. Wilson, whose website nicholaswilson.com outlines as brazen fraud, estimates hundreds of thousands of subprime customers have been caught out and estimates the value of illegally added fees at between £750 million and £1 billion. Pounds. Despite the ruling in his favour and Wilson's effort to raise this issue with the mainstream media, city authorities and HSBC Bank to date have made no effort to identify victims of the fraud or to refund illegally added charges. It appears HSBC is not only too big to jail, but its management are too big to be held accountable. In January 2014, analysts from Forensic Asia released a report on HSBC described by journalist Harry Wilson as the most aggressive sell report he had ever read. The Forensic Asia report carried by CNBC cited a £111 billion black hole in HSBC's balance sheet, including various impairments, upcoming regulatory fines including LIBOR, Eurobor and Forex and yet was largely ignored by HSBC and UK media. Can the board please confirm the current size of the black hole within HSBC's balance sheet and clarify a provision for £750 million of illegal charges added to UK high street customer accounts, as highlighted by Mr Wilson, is currently incorporated within the bank's impairment?
Okay, uh, a number of things there. Um, I'm surprised you're surprised that given what you read out in relation to the, the drug cartels and, and so on, pretty lurid stuff, which was in the, the, the PSI report, um, which is a, is, a, is a humbling document. And, and we have taken and, and talked about the last two meetings, the extraordinary steps that we've taken to remediate our lack of knowledge of things that we knew insufficient about. The fact that we're now taking more care in understanding who our customers are, where their money comes from, and what they do with their money, and remembering, remembering that uh, one of the definitions of money laundering is tax evasion, and, and that large movements of, of cash are often uh, connected to that, it is entirely understandable that people would ask questions. I will absolutely concede that there was a little bit of over-exuberance at the early part of that policy within, within the UK, which shows how seriously um, our staff took the guidance that we were giving in relation to being much more vigilant. Um, but it's not surprising that we're taking more uh, steps to ensure we know our customers, the source of their money and what they're doing with it, than they were doing historically, given the problems that we and others in our industry are going through. Also, our regulators everywhere in the world, and certainly here and certainly in the United States, are upping their expectations of the steps that we will take in all these areas. So the, the world has changed. You said how many questions were asked in relation to the situation we found ourselves in Mexico that were, common, that, that were dealt with in the settlement of 2012. The answer is not enough. So it's, again, unsurprising that we're asking more today. Uh, in relation to Mr. Wilson, yes, he did. Uh, uh, I remember him at, at that meeting. Um, we're in dispute with Mr. Wilson. We do not agree with uh, the characterization that he has of everything that we do, and therefore we're in dispute, and I, and I can't say any more about it. Um, I think the fact that the Forensic Asia report that you referred to had very little impact suggests that there is more credibility afforded to... Um, the financial management of this group, the audit committee, the auditors and our regulators, all of whom who have read that report and all of whom have got responsibility for ensuring that the position we present of our financial affairs and of our capital is accurately stated. Um, and uh, the most accurate statement of our capital and of our financial statement is our annual report and accounts updated by our first quarter statement, uh, not a, a piece of research produced by Forensic Asia. Thank you.